On this video, we'll talk a little bit more about the process of deploying an application on Shifa. But to go a bit more into details, we'll be deploying a, a simple three-tier application. So an application that needs um, a web server access, our application code, and database access. But not only that, we're going to be covering the differences or some of the differences between deploying an application directly on Kubernetes versus deploying the same applications through Shipa on Kubernetes. When we go into the first uh, example, when we're deploying an application directly to Kubernetes. So me as an application developer, I don't, I not only need to be concerned about developing my code. So the source app dot uh, Python require the application here and my requirement text file. That's the content of my application. But if you see, there are a lot of other files that I need to develop and I need to create and I need to maintain those objects for my application. And those files include things such as your Docker file. So me as a developer now, I need to learn how to build the Docker file and I need to not only know that, but also understand from an operating system perspective what I actually need, what type of operating system I should be using to be a lighter Docker image or Docker container. If I'm using Ubuntu, then what type of command should I run to use uh, to update the system versus if I'm using um, um, a Red Hat image, for example, then what type I need, what are entry points, how do I expose port, how do I copy my code from the local repository to my Docker container. So you need to learn and you need to maintain and create those as you develop your uh, multiple applications. The other part is because this is a three tier application, then you're gonna need a database access. So you're gonna to have to create a deployment object for your MySQL. So this is gonna create a MySQL container uh, with MySQL server in it, and you need to put uh, learn how to do uh, template, the containers that you need, the images that you need for your MySQL, as well as the ports that you're gonna expose. And same thing for MySQL, you need a service object where you need to expose port 3306, for example, for application MySQL. So you need to create and maintain that as well. Another part or object you need to now create related to your app directly is a deployment uh, object. So you need to create that. You need to know what replicas are, the templates are within Kubernetes. Uh, you need to know how to create your containers and container port. And together with that, you need a service. So you need to access your application from an external uh, perspective. So which ports you're gonna be exposing, the load balancer that you're creating. So you need to create all those files. But if we look at it, while this is great in learning Kubernetes and Docker files, this is all great in learning new things are great. The, when, we, when we look at it, the developer actually is being pulled away from delivering the application to delivering infrastructure objects. While Kubernetes is a great tool um, and the future is there and Chipa relies and integrates heavily with Kubernetes, if we look at it, the developer is being pulled away from delivering code and you're now being asked to deliver objects instead and learning how to deploy objects, deploy containers and learning operating system uh, requirements. It, it takes for the focus away from the application code, which ultimately is the goal of the developer and the value that the developer delivers. And that's what the organization needs at the end of the day. And not only that, but it also creates opportunity for misconfiguration and deployment failures. So if you're not used to managing those objects or creating those objects, there is a big chance that sometimes during deployments, you're gonna create wrong objects, there's misconfiguration, applications are gonna fail, and so on and so forth. And not to say that this is a very simple uh, concept, and if you go deeper into the development workflow or DevOps workflow within Kubernetes, um, you're gonna have to learn things such as kubectl, what persistent volume claims are, persistent volumes, you're gonna need to know what cluster IP versus node port and where I use each ingress and how after my application is deployed even, how do I monitor my application and how do I see logs? So it's interesting to see that um, developer experience has been really hurt by, uh, by the workflow now that Kubernetes brings. So let's, let's have a look at how Shipa overcomes that and allows DevOps to build a more structured and controlled environment at the same time that it takes away from the developer's hand the need to create objects, manage infrastructure, manage YAML files, and so on and so forth. Let's look at it.
Before we get into the code difference between uh, deploying an application on Kubernetes through Shipa and, and directly on Kubernetes, let's look at what we have here. Uh, we have a Shipa instance that I have access to, and here I can see information about pools, applications deployed, distribution, deployments on a pool base, and so on. I can see that a DevOps or a platform engineering team on my team already connected clusters. Uh, so I can see Kubernetes clusters coming from Oracle Cloud, so your OKE, I can see from Azure, and I can see multiple ones from GKE. I can see pools already in here. Um, so those were already created by the team. And inside each pool, I can then see the nodes, I can see monitoring information, applications deployed in there, and so on and so forth. But what matters the most to me is the application part as an application developer. I can see applications that were previously deployed by my team, the status, and if I go into them, I can see more information such as monitoring, life cycle, security scans, and so on. But now the goal is create and deploy my application on Kubernetes through Shipa, and how easy is that? So let's look at the application code we have here. As you can see, it's a Python app. It's, it's a very simple Python application and that application was deployed, it's gonna show delivering on Kubernetes. I have here my requirements file. So I'm saying I need to install Flask and Gunicorn. And I have my proc file. Proc files are gonna be executed uh, in your app by your application every time your application is restarted. So every time your application is restarted, in this case, Gunacorn is going to start running and making your application available at that specific port. And last but not least, you're going to see Shipa YAML file. In this case, it's empty because it's a simple app. There is nothing specific that or special that I need. But in our documentation, you can see that through the Shipa YAML file, you can run hooks. So you can run specific or custom scripts when your application image is being built, after it's being built as well as every time your application comes up or is restarted. You can also place health checks. So every time Shipa deploys your app, it's going to perform a health check on the path that you want. And if there is a different status code than the one you specified here, Shipa will roll back all your objects for you automatically and will create an incident alert, um, either both through Shipa and through your incident tool connected to Shipa. Great. But now, the, code is, the, the goal is comparing my application deployment process through Shipa and directly on Kubernetes. First and foremost, one of the things you're gonna see here is that I don't have any Docker file here. So me as a user or a developer, I don't need to be creating and managing Docker files and images. Shipa will do that automatically for me. I also don't have any type of Kubernetes objects and YAML files that I have to manage, like the ones showed on the slides before. So me as a developer, my only concern is actually deploying my code to Shipa and Shipa will figure out what to do between Shipa and Kubernetes. So first step is create my app. Let's create Shipa app create demo one. You can say it's Python as a platform um, since my code is Python. The team admin uh, and the pool since I have access to multiple pools. I have to specify one of them. We can check OKE. So we're gonna be deploying our code to Oracle Kubernetes cluster. There, oh, there is already one. So let's call it demo two. Great, application is being created. If we go to Shipa applications and we search for demo, we can see our demo two app in here. We can see that right now it's in status idle, so there is no code deployed to it, there's no container running, but Shipa already created the endpoint for my application or the C name for my application, which we can use to access the application once it's deployed. So let's go back. Now we're gonna deploy the app. To deploy the app, you have different ways of doing it. You can use Shipa app deploy command, or you can use your GitLab or your Bitbucket and your other CI platforms that you have in place today to deliver the code directly to the Shipa pool. Or you can use Git commands. As you can see, Shipa creates a repository for your application if you create that application directly in Shipa. So let's use Git. Git init, 
git add, git commit, and now we're gonna do a git push. And we're gonna say master. So nothing really different or special done. And as mentioned, as you deploy your application, Shipa will start creating your container image for you automatically based on your code and based on the requirements file and prop file that you expose. And once this is created, then Shipa will deploy that and create the objects into Kubernetes automatically. Let's see as the process goes. Great, so now we see that the image creation has been uh, completed successfully. You can see that Shipa will be running any hooks that you created, and it's gonna start now creating the objects required for Kubernetes. It's gonna perform security scans on your code and on the image. And if all successful, then Shipa deploy and creates those objects automatically in Kubernetes. You can see that the deployment is done. It's completed successfully. If we go to our applications again and I search for demo, our demo to app is now running. If we try to access the endpoint for our app, we can see the delivering on Kubernetes as you saw on the code. So great, the application is deployed, was easy enough. I didn't have to learn anything about my Kubernetes cluster, any requirements in terms of objects or anything uh, whatsoever. Uh, you were gonna see also that in a few seconds, uh, Shipa is going to start generating metrics uh, or monitoring for your applications automatically. So you don't have to be concerned about how do I integrate this into Kubernetes monitoring and how do I get access to that. The other part is how now, how do I provide access to a database to my app? Shipa has pre-built connections into databases that can be set up by your DevOps and your platform engineering team, for example, or even the development team if access is given. And you can use those services or those database to connect directly to your uh, application. We can see one created here, but if we were to create a new one, for example, MongoDB, um, the team could create a MongoDB. It would say Mongo1. They could select one of the teams available. They would just need to put the, uh, the host, the port, and a database name for Shipa. And that's it. Shipa would connect to that Mongo instance and database and make it available here. This is what the team did with Postgres. So the team connected a Postgres, an external Postgres database to Shipa. Same process. Postgres, for example, select a team, the host, the port, the database user and password, and a database, an existing database name. So Shipa can plug in and connect and create the objects required. It's done here, one called Postgres East One. Directly from here, once the service is created like I have here and my DevOps or platform engineering team gave me access to, I can now create instances. So I can create my databases directly on the database server. So I can create one called um, demo app and I can set the team owner as admin. I'm part of the admin team. Great. I can see that a database called demo app has been created. And now the only into that database server. Now the only thing I need to do is bind the database to that application. So it's called demo to our app. Great. If we click on bind, the operation is going to take a few seconds. And what Shipa is going to do is Shipa will bind. It's already completed actually. Uh, Shipa will bind that database into your application. So you don't need to learn how to deploy a database on Kubernetes, how to bind that to your pod and so on and so forth. If we go into our demo app and we can see the environment variables, we can see Postgres user, we can see our Postgres database name, the password and the host. So we can use those in our code for connecting and populating and consuming the database. Same thing if we were to access Shipa app shell demo to the app. And we say echo pg user, for example, inside our 
application container. We can see it in there. And Chipa handles the communication between your application and the databases or the external services. So everything is handled through HTTPS. So all connections are secure. Every time a new database is created, a new user and a new random password and all is generated. So security is already implemented and top of mind. And we can see that our application is still running and continues running in here. And as we look maybe into the app again, demo two, we can see information about monitoring for our application containers, such as CPU, memory utilization, and so on. And as access start flowing into your app, you're gonna see status codes, transactions, requests by second. So you can right out of the gate, start monitoring your application and seeing how it's performing. You can also see where your applications are located. You can see the specific units. So as your application scales, you can see the additional units that are added in here. You can see life cycle, so you can see when your application was created, when it was deployed, and you can see the complete log tracing here, so it's easily accessible. And any security scans that were performed, security scans are performed at deployment model, uh, deployment time, as well as on a scheduled basis. So if any vulnerabilities uh, are created or detected, then you can see that on the detailed report here. So those are the difference or some of the differences between deploying an application directly on Kubernetes. It's require, it requires more, more time from the development team. It creates more effort on the DevOps or platform engineering team to help developers support and create the YAMLs and manage those YAMLs. You have to learn all the Kubernetes objects. And now on Shifa, you are purely concerned about deploying your code. That's it and you don't have to worry about anything else, creating objects, spending time, and you're delivering value, which is delivering application. Hope this was helpful. Thank you.